as a part of a lesson uh, of, the, uh, of the American Revolution, a fourth grade teacher had made a copy of the Declaration of Independence. And then she passed that document to the kids. And as that document was passed desk to desk, each kid taking a look at it and passing it on to the next desk. And finally, it came to this one boy, a boy who was a first-generation first American. His parents had, had uh, recently immigrated to the United States. And the teacher noticed this boy. Man, he was just studying this document intently, almost reverently. And then before passing it on, he took out his pen and, with all seriousness, added his own signature. <laughs> the kid got it, didn't he? I mean, the signers of the Declaration of Independence knew that by putting their name on the line, so to speak, it would require of them great sacrifice. This is more than just saying you're patriotic, more than waving a flag. It would take sacrifice, perhaps even their very lives, to ensure that a country be built of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness for themselves and for generations to come. But how about us? Do we get it? And I'm not talking now about the Declaration of Independence. I'm talking about this declaration. We pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Do we get that? What it means to pray in God's name, to have the privilege and responsibility not to pray in our own name, but to pray in the very God to whom we look. Or what it means to be baptized in that same name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and to be declared in that moment a beloved child of God. Do we get what it means to truly Get what it means to receive the body of Christ that comes from this sacred altar. Or to stand up, as we will in a few moments, you would, you with, all, with, with one another and declare, I believe in one God. And what about the privilege? Do we really get it to understand the commitment, the responsibility that is demanded of us when we call each other brothers and sisters in Christ? You know, because by doing these things, things sometimes we take so for granted or, or that come so easily, we're making a commitment. We commit ourselves to something profound, second to no other commitment in our lives. It's a declaration not of independence, but of absolute dependence on Jesus Christ. You know, the story of the suffering servant is embedded into our, into our faith history from, from the beginning. That, that sense, as we heard in the prophet Isaiah today, that they awaited generation upon generations, this great, this great message that one day we would have a Savior, incarnate God, Jesus the Christ, who would come not to be, not to be served, but to serve to give his life. It was a story that was lived out in the earliest believers of the church at great risk, and still today in our world by countless other martyrs. Sacrifice is not a natural inclination. At least it's not for me. I kind of like the smooth ride, right? And we like the reward, the comfort, the recognition for what we do. And there's certainly nothing wrong with that, with that inclination. It's uh, good things to enjoy, bring joy to us in our lives. But there's, there's something more that we have to embrace, something that separates us from people who don't believe. The willingness to sacrifice, the willful sacrifice for the sake of others, to be servants. It's the willingness to take second place so that somebody else might take first. The willingness to do without so that someone else doesn't have to do without. The willing to step back so that someone else might step up, to give away a treasure so that something that someone else would never be able to treasure becomes theirs. To remain silent so that someone else might speak. To open the door of our mind, over our heart, to, 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 to make sure that others have what we have, and to do so not 
because it gains us any political points, not for any reward or recognition, not because it feels good or it'll look good on a resume for college or a, or a college application, not even because it will read really well in our obituary. We do it for one reason and one reason only, so that Jesus Christ might be glorified. Because when we put our name on the line for Christ, that should mean something. 